Pitchers and catchers report this week. So we will begin our player preview series. And today we're starting off with Tyler Alexander. All today on Locked On Tigers. You are Locked On Tigers, your daily Detroit Tigers podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. What is up, everybody? Welcome back to another edition of Locked On Tigers. I'm, of course, your host, Scott Bentley. Today is Monday, February 13th, 2023. Thank you for making Locked On Tigers your first listen. Every single day, we are free and available wherever you get your podcasts, including YouTube. All righty. We are back to five episodes a week. That means it is officially baseball season in the eyes of Locked On Network. Uh, blah, blah, blah. Pitchers and catchers report this week. So that is something that we all look forward to. We all look forward to watching like half an hour of Alex Lang or or Tyler Alexander, maybe bullpen sessions uh, while we're all at work and whatever during the day. So that is what we have to look forward to this week. Players starting to report by the end of the week. We should have uh, a good group of people down there in Lakeland. So with this show, we've been talking about this for a while. We are going to call it the player preview series. I like the alliteration with that. Okay. And it is, that's what it is. We're going to take each individual player on the roster and on the 40 man. Even some of the minor league guys that aren't going to make the team out of camp. Everybody on the 40-man roster, and we're going to look at what their expectations are for this season, what we can expect out of them for this upcoming season, and what type of players they are. Okay, and we are going to start off that series with Tyler Alexander. I thought Tyler Alexander was a good pick to start off with for a few reasons. One, when I Googled Tiger's 40-man roster, his name is at the top of the list because it's alphabetically by last name. So that all really helped him a lot. I'm going to be honest, but in reality, joking aside, I, I didn't want to pick someone like, I don't know, like Javi or, or Miggy or whatever, like off rip, you know, I, I wanted, and I didn't want the person to be someone that maybe wouldn't make the team out of camp or anything to start off this series either. And I think Tyler Alexander kind of fits right into this bill of he was brought back we chose to bring him back. We could have not brought Tyler Alexander back onto this roster. We chose to, even with the, the new regime and even with the turnover in the front office. And he's still here, and he is going to have a prominent role, I think, on this team. I, I'm not really sure people realize probably how prominent of a role he's going to have in this bullpen, at least. And, and so he's going to have every opportunity to have a really big year. And so I think that that maybe is overlooked in the middle of February, just kind of the expectations for Tyler Alexander. So let's start with the pitcher that he is. We all know what type of pitcher Tyler Alexander is. He pounds the strike zone. He pitches the contact. He doesn't walk too many hitters, but he also doesn't strike out too many hitters. Last year, I thought was a little bit of a step back from 2021. And that's something that we are going to say a lot this season, especially when we get into some of the hitters, right? <laughs> That's going to be a commonly used phrase. So this certainly isn't only a Tyler Alexander thing, but had a pretty respectable 2021, had a one win season for the Tigers, uh, appeared in 41 games, started 15 and had a three, eight, one ERA. This is all 2021 stats. And then in 2022, was a negative 0.1 win player, according to fan graphs, had a 4.81 ERA. And I think the more alarming things with that, like that's already a career high in ERA. Oh, I guess in 53 innings as a rookie, he had a 4.86. But uh, the, the alarming thing there is the expected ERA was 5.42 and the FIP was 4.99. So, that's kind of telling you what those numbers are, are are trying to hint at is his 481 may have even been a, like it maybe should have even been a little higher. He may have gotten lucky that it was only even a 481 ERA, which is obviously not a great sign. K per nine, 5.44. That's very low. He's always been very low. But it is worth noting, like his career mark after last season, after 2022, is 693. So the 5.44 K per nine, yes, it's low. And yes, he's always kind of low, but that's even low for him, right? 
If you look at his last, his first three years in the league, 788, 842, 736. Now the 842 is in 36 innings in a shortened season, but regardless, this was really the, the biggest sample size of just not being able to strike anyone out that we've ever seen in, in a legitimate four-year career with solid innings pitched across all four seasons, relatively speaking, depending on the length of the season. Uh, and the, his specialty, right, he doesn't walk very many batters. He pounds the strike zone. Very solid there. Career mark of 209 last year. He was a little bit higher than that, but uh, in, in the same ballpark. So doesn't walk very many hitters. And yeah, I mean, that's, we, we all know, we all know what we're getting with Tyler Alexander. We, we are very aware of what type of pitcher he is. Now, I think that once you start looking at some of the unique stats is where you start getting a grasp of what type of role we should all want him to be. I know what type of role I want him to be this upcoming season. And I'm going to spend the next 20 minutes trying to convince you that you should feel the same way. Okay. And if you don't have the end, that's fine. I have never been on the Tyler Alexander should be considered in the starting rotation train ever. And if you're a longtime follower of me or you've been listening to this show for almost the entire two years that I've been doing this, you are aware of that, right? I, I actually got a little bit of heat. It was the end of the 2021 season. That was when everybody would always make the jokes that like I hated Tyler Alexander. And that is could not be further from the truth. He, he's uh, on it. First off, off the field, great personality, great interview. But on the field, I've never had an issue with Tyler Alexander coming out of the bullpen. I, I just, I refuse, I, I'm not there with him being a starting pitcher. I don't think I ever will be. And I think that if you look at the Tigers offseason this year, they agree with me. I think that all the moves that they made line up to putting the team in a situation where Tyler Alexander will not have to start baseball games this season. Okay, so we'll talk about that a little bit later. But just to reiterate my point, uh, I mean, in 101 innings pitched last season in 2022, as a starter, he had 80 p innings pitched, a 5.74 ERA, an 842 OPS against, and 17 of his 18 home runs given up on the season were as a starter. As a reliever, this is crazy, okay? 21 innings pitched, a 1.29 ERA, a 565 opponent OPS, and again, only one of his 18 home runs given up were when he was coming out of the bullpen all season. Okay? If you look at innings 7 through 9 as a whole, just games in which he pitches in innings 7, 8, 9 combined, his opponent's OPS is 601, barely over 600. That's very solid. It's comfortably the lowest. If you look at the, the first six innings or even break them up into three, one through three and four through six. They're much, much higher. Uh, third time through the lineup. His OPS is over a thousand when facing someone for the third time in a baseball game. And the first two are mid 700s. Like all signs just point to him being a significantly better starting pitcher that or a significantly better reliever rather than a starting pitcher. Uh, some of the other interesting splits that I think are worth noting and that will kind of lead us into his style of pitching, which we'll get into after the break here. But uh, first off, 706 OPS against against left-handed hitters. Tyler Alexander, obviously a lefty. That's a good sign. You want to have that advantage. And an 816 OPS against righties and 14 of his 18 home runs given up on the season were also all against righties. So Definitely, I don't want to call him a specialist because he's more of a like swingman reliever that can kind of pitch you what the fourth, fifth, and sixth innings if you need it, or fifth, sixth, seven, five, six if you only want to leave him in for two. Like he's more of that role. So I don't want to say that he's necessarily only going to be the, like a quote unquote lefty specialist, but certainly has a much certainly has a much bigger advantage against lefties than righties. Um, okay, let's get into his style of pitching, just the type of pitcher he is and how it is going to affect the bullpen this upcoming season and what we need to see out of him to be an effective pitcher this upcoming season. We'll do that right after I tell y'all about our friends over at FanDuel. It's the midway point of the NBA season, all-star festivities right around the corner. Is that this upcoming weekend? I think it is. Uh, so now is the perfect time to download the FanDuel app, America's number one sports book. The reason why you should download it right now is because new customers get a no-sweat first bet up to $1,000. 
That's bonus bets back if your first bet doesn't win. Just download the FanDuel Sportsbook app. It's safe, secure, and super easy to use. Then you can bet on everything from the money line, the point scores, threes drained. There are so many fun all-star festivities literally right around the corner, like I said, too. And there's going to be a ton of really fun stuff to bet on this upcoming weekend in that regard. So FanDuel also even lets you combine your bets. There's a bigger chance at a payout with the same game parlay, something that is also booming across the country and is very fun that you can do on FanDuel. So don't miss the chance to get your no sweat first bet up to $1,000 in bonus bets. When you go to FanDuel.com slash locked on, that's FanDuel.com slash locked on to learn more. Make every moment more with FanDuel, the official sports book partner of the NBA. All right, everybody, welcome back here. Segment two of Locked On Tigers. Thanks for making us your first listen every day. For your next listen, check out the Locked On MLB Prospects podcast. Host Lindsey Crosby is a prospect encyclopedia, and he's going deep on the MLB stars of tomorrow. It's free and available wherever you get your podcasts, including YouTube, just like us. All right, let's get into the type of pitcher that Tyler Alexander is. So as we mentioned earlier, he's very much a pitch to contact type of guy. Doesn't really get swings and misses. Doesn't ever have high strikeout numbers. So that leads to him getting hit hard some games, right? That just comes with the territory of being kind of a barrel missing pitcher or an attempting to be a barrel missing pitcher. Sometimes your stuff's not going to miss barrels and that's just the reality of baseball. But so he has the, the, the ability to get rocked every once in a while, but when he's at his best, he can be really effective out of the bullpen and also is very much an on-brand Scott Harris guy, which is why it doesn't really surprise me in hindsight that he was kept around because he doesn't walk anyone. That's the one thing that I've always loved about Tyler Alexander and one of the reasons why I think he can be so valuable out of the bullpen. He's a lefty that doesn't allow walks. The, the cardinal rule of being a relief pitcher is don't allow walks. So I I really do think that he can carve out an effective role on this team going forward. But there is some stuff that he needs to tweak from last year to be able to do so. So uh, 18 home runs against last year. We already talked about that. Balls in play. Okay, these are his numbers against balls in play. Opponents OPS of 644. So a ball in play is anything that's not a home run that is put in play, basically. Right? Home run is out of play. That's completely on the pitcher. Blah, blah, blah. So that's all other extra base hits and singles and whatnot. Only a 644 OPS of balls in play. That's a pretty solid number. Again, when he's at his best, he can be a pretty solid pitch to contact guy. Um, But we also need to to highlight what his true style is. So just when looking at the percentiles, it really is crazy, okay? And this past year, again, was not his best season season. Uh, of his four years, arguably the worst year of his career, to be honest with you. Uh, and it's still, it wasn't horrible. He was basically a replacement level player. Like, it's not like he was a, he was a dumpster fire coming out of the pen. But um, of the four years, probably his worst. Uh, you know, he has some positives. 51st percentile in hard hit percentage. That's good. Again, pitch to contact. You want to induce weak contact. 39th percentile in average exit velocity last year. Not bad. Uh, and 81st percentile. In walk percentage, very, very good, obviously. But uh, expected batting average against, fourth percentile. Expected slug, first percentile, the bottom 1% in the league. Whiff percentage, first percentile. K percentage, fourth percentile. Fastball velo, fourth percentile. Barrel percentage, fourth percentile. I might have already said that one. Uh, Chase rate, 52nd percentile, not bad, but we'll talk about that later. So a lot of hard contact given up last season and a lot of line drives given up last season. And uh, that's something that I want to highlight within this upcoming season. So when talking about his, I I guess kind of reiterating what I just said, this is a a guy who gives up a lot of fly balls and that plays well into Comerica to be completely honest with you. We'll talk about that in a second, which is is not a bad thing, but I, I also think that it's just important if he can get a pitch that can just be an effective, consistent ground ball pitch, we could really be in business and he could really kind of break through and be a super effective reliever out of the bullpen. But he's a reliever 
that pitches to fly balls. And like we see starters that sometimes pitch to fly balls, try to get pop outs, try to get long fly outs, keep the ball into the center of the field, especially in Comerica's history. We've seen that a lot. But as a reliever, I think it's imperative that you have the ability to induce ground balls. And that's just not something that Alexander at, at really any point in his career has been even better than league average at. Like his numbers uh, in comparison to the league average ground ball rate are pretty consistently lower and the fly ball rates are pretty consistently higher. So it, that's just something that I would like to see an adjustment on. Now, this is what year five of Tyler Alexander. So I'm not sure how, you know, if he's going to just randomly overnight change and be a completely different pitcher. I don't expect that, but I, I do think that Harris is playing into the park a little bit. And like I said, we'll talk about that a little bit later. Um, when it comes to earlier, we talked about whiff percentage, you know, for Tyler, this is – he gets chases, and I think that that can really help us this upcoming season, right? He has the ability to get people to leave the strike zone. It's just they don't swing and miss when they leave the strike zone. And so I, I think maybe a little bit more adjustments there could lead to something. Uh, chase contact percentage, okay? So just the amount of times the batter makes contact with the ball on a ball that's considered a chase pitch that's well out of the strike zone – is almost 15% higher than league average. His chase rate oh, as a whole is not bad. It's 52nd percentile, but his whiff percentage is in the first percentile. See, so like, I think that there's, there's again, there's something there that you can maybe play with. Um, I, I really do. I think, I think he can be a, a solid pitcher in this pen and can really be a really effective swing man for this team let's talk about him as just really specifically kind of his repertoire what he's going to be throwing out of the pen this upcoming season uh consistently trying to get weak contact is what he do when is what he does when he is at his best he does that by throwing a lot of sliders low and away to lefties and a lot of change-ups low and away to righties he does not throw very many sliders to righties and he does not throw a lot of change-ups period to lefties he almost didn't throw any change-ups to left-handed hitters last year I think it was like 10 all season so those are very much his his chase pitches and two strike counts or whatnot that's what he's going to okay now the change-up last year was not a very effective pitch the run value on it was one of the worst in his entire repertoire and he's a lefty and he throws the change-up a lot on two strike counts to righties. So that could be maybe an adjustment made there. Maybe it's not working. And look, when you look at his, his repertoires of the past, he actually has some se several seasons where all, every pitch is around a net zero run value. Like it's a, it's a decent enough pitch league average pitch. So he has the ability to, to have that. I think that last year really was just kind of a, a miserable year for so many players. And, uh, I, I really do expect him to bounce back a little bit there. So, um, you know, last year, the changeup sinker and four seam, we already talked about were all negative pitches. And then the cutter and the slider were barely positive pitches. So when he's at his best, though, he can have five league average or slightly better even pitches. And so, so that's something that I just want to highlight. Even though last year, again, was kind of a struggle, this upcoming season, I, I really think, could be a, a solid bounce back season for him. In reference to earlier, we we're talking about the ground ball pitches and, and the inability to get them. He has a sinker, which makes it all the more frustrating. His sinker has had a, a batting average against of well over 300 for two years in a row. Uh, and his ground ball percentage as a whole, like we talked about earlier, is also well below league average, but just gives up a lot of fly balls everybody's getting under his pitches and that is something that again I think Scott Harris played into there's a quote earlier in the offseason from Scott Harris that I want to talk about and I think that it's the sole reason that Tyler Alexander is going to be coming out of your Tigers bullpen in 2023 we'll talk about that right after I tell y'all about our friends over at Bill Bar if you're looking for a delicious treat but you don't want all the fat and calories then you have to go try built bar we are deep into february at this point i'm still working on my new year's resolution to eat healthier i want to carry it throughout the whole season that's a big goal of mine and built is helping me do so because i don't have to sacrifice taste for health 
It really is the best in the business. What makes them so good? Well, for starters, they're covered in 100% real chocolate. That's right, real chocolate. And they come in unbelievable flavors like churro, peanut butter brownie, coconut almond. I'm not sure how Bill does it, but these bars taste like a candy bar while maintaining amazing macros. What's even better is they're healthy. Only 130 calories, 4 grams of sugar, and a whopping 17 grams of protein. And now you don't need to wait around to get a box. For years, we've been talking about ordering your Built Bars through Built.com. You still can do that, but now you can go to your local Walmart or Sam's Club. Go to Walmart, get a four-bar box. Go to Sam's Club, get a 13-bar box with some brownie batter and some churro flavors in there. Thank me later. No matter how you get your Built Bars, just get your hands on some. Go to Built.com today. All right, everybody, welcome back. Third and final segment here, Locked On Tigers. Talking about Tyler Alexander. So there was a quote earlier in the offseason from Scott Harris where he said, we want to either be all in or all out on being a pitcher's park or a hitter's park. And that's why when we talk about the dimensions coming in, they weren't that dramatic. They're not going to have an extreme effect in year one. Like you're not going to see 15 to 20 home runs out there that wouldn't have been homers last year, right? Like, it's really, it's not going to be as dramatic as I think a lot of people think. And we talked about that on the episode and in, in which they did move them in. So I think that this is still very, very much a pitcher's center field. And Tyler Alexander is tailor-made for Comerica Park. We talked about earlier, his home and road splits are remarkable. They are extremely different. His ERA on the road was over five. His ERA at home was a sub four. I I think he really plays into this park well, and he's just everything Harris wants in someone that plays into this park well. We've said it a million times. I'm a broken record, but he doesn't walk hitters, and he allows fly balls in a fly ball friendly park. Sounds like he's tailor made to be a Detroit Tiger for me. So in hindsight, again, it's not really that surprising that Harris came in and still wanted to to work out a deal to keep him on board. Um, I, I think that also when you're looking at, you know, if we just want to talk about his role on the team and what we can really expect from him this upcoming season, I think that they address starting pitching a lot. We brought in uh, Matt Boyd. We brought in Michael Lorenzen. And we already had three or four starting pitchers with the the foursome, right, of Hill and Fiedo and Brisky and um, Wentz. So you have a lot of starting pitching depth. And I think that now you're at a point where Tyler Alexander should not have to start a baseball game for you. And again, that's no disrespect to the dude whatsoever. I, I've said it a lot on this show. I think Tyler Alexander can be a really effective reliever. His number out of the pen numbers out of the pen last year were great. His numbers out of the pen throughout his career have been better than his numbers as a starter. He's really good against lefties. You can kind of use him as a as somewhat of a lefty specialist. If you have a part of the opponent's lineup where for the next two innings, they have four lefties coming up, boom, Tyler Alexander time, right? I think that there is a a big role for him on this team. Also, when just looking at the bullpen, how many lefties do you see in this bullpen? Not very many. So even if you need him more as a swing man, he can provide that or, If you just want, okay, hey, there's two lefties coming up to end an inning in the eighth, and then we'll go right back to kind of regularly scheduled programming and throw Alex Lang out there for the ninth or whatever, then we're going to go to Alexander in a high leverage situation with some lefties coming up too. I I think that he's going to be used in a lot of different situations, and that's, again, why I wanted to start with him. I, I think he's, like, under the radar, one of the more fascinating conversations when talking about his role on the team this upcoming season. So definitely someone again, to watch out for. Uh, Like I said, I don't, if he has to start games this year, that means that there are a ton of injuries. I don't expect him to start very many games. Like I said, I, I think that they address starting pitching a lot, not just for, we don't want Tyler Alexander to start, but just so that, I mean, last year we had Brian Garcia starting games. Like, they don't want to be in that position again where, oh, like, we're using somebody that we don't actually want to be a starter as a starter. If he continues to not allow walks and he continues to play into Comerica's strength and is used a lot against lefties, I 
really do expect a decent season from him. Now, when looking at the projections, they somewhat disagree with me. Now, there's a million different projection formulas out there at this point, like literally a million. So whatever one you want to use, you go and use that one. Uh, Most of them have him around a replacement level player. There's, I mean, just looking at fan graphs, there's, which they have like six projection models listed. Uh, There's negative 0.3, positive 0.2, negative 0.1, negative 0.2, negative 0.1, positive 0.3. So all around negative 0.3 and positive 0.3, somewhere in that range. It would not shock me if he went out there and replicated somewhat close to his 2021 season. And in 2021, he started 15 games, but he also appeared in a lot more games out of the pen that that year than he did in 2021. And again, he was a one win player out of out of the bullpen primarily that season. And it it really would not shock me. Now, how many innings he's going to get? Again, I think his role is so not up in the air, but versatile. Like he's he's like a utility player in pitcher form. You want. Uh, Just him to face a couple of batters because lefties are up, boom. Your starter gets rocked early and you want someone to carry you to the sixth inning, boom. Like he he can kind of do, if you need a spot starter again, like he he started, what, 42 games in his career? Like boom, like he he really is kind of a Swiss army knife out of the bullpen. And I, I just wanted to highlight some of the things that not only just reiterate why I think he should only be coming out of the pen, but I I wanted to highlight his specialties and the numbers that really showcase what he is effective at, because I think that we are in a situation now where he is not going to be forced into a role that will not allow him to excel. I think that uh, assuming even remote health, even somewhat decent health out of this pitching staff, I think that he can really carve out a role. We're going to get used to seeing him be relatively effective. And I'm not saying he's going to win reliever of the year or be the closer or anything. I'm not trying to hype you up to and say that he's going to be a four win reliever or something ridiculous. But if he put up a one win season again, a one and a half win season again, and threw 50 to 60 innings all out of the bullpen, it wouldn't shock me at all. Okay, cool. Thanks for making Locked On Tigers your first listen every day. For your next, for your next listen, check on the Locked On MLB Prospects podcast. Host Lindsey Crosby is a prospect encyclopedia. He's going deep on the MLB stars of tomorrow. It is free and available wherever you get your podcasts, including YouTube. Uh, let's see. Is there anything else I want to talk about with Tyler Alexander? I don't think so. Uh, as a whole, I, I mean, I would like to see a little bit more variance in – oh, I have two strikes on a lefty, I'm going to go slider low and away, or I have two strikes on a righty, righty, let me go change up low and away, because the change up just didn't work last year. Uh, The sinker, uh, again, as a whole, I think it has the ability to be effective, but it's just not enough of a ground ball inducing pitch to really make me want him to throw it all the time. Like he has an effective cutter that's been pretty effective for his entire career. And he has a four seam fastball when he needs it as well. I just, I don't know. Like if, if the sinkers only goal, unless you have an Alex Lang sinker that moves like eight feet, the, the only goal of the sinker is to miss the barrel and get a ground ball. And when it's not doing that on a consistent basis, or it, it's still getting hit really hard and it's just not equating into outs or ground ball outs, then like maybe don't throw it the second most out of all your pitches. But that's just me from afar. We'll see what adjustments he makes. We'll see what he looks like in the spring. Mostly it's the cutter and then those two off-speed pitches, depending on, on the count. Uh, but I, I don't know. If he threw the, the sinker a lot less this year, I would not lose sleep. I would be pretty okay with that, to be honest with you. So we'll see what happens. But that's what I think about Tyler Alexander. I'm expecting a, a, a nice bounce-back season, and I think that he will not have to – play above his pay grade as much this season as we have kind of leaned on him to do for the last two years. And I think that'll benefit him greatly. And people will be reminded uh, of the the really solid reliever that Tyler Alexander can be over the course of a full season. Cool. Cool. Big things, big things. Um, I think that's it. Peace and love going to therapy's dope. We're back tomorrow, five days a week. Haven't picked who we're going to talk about yet. Uh, hopefully I can, I can, 
I get ADHD brain and I just like run. So I'm, I'm trying to organize my thoughts a lot better. So if I struggled on that one with this one, I apologize. Uh, hopefully it only takes me a few episodes to get back in the swing of things, but uh, I'm, I'm glad to be back every day a week. I'm glad. And pitchers and catchers reporting by the end of the week. Peace and love. Going to therapy is dope. I'll catch you all tomorrow, baby. Go Tigers.